G'day everyone, my name is Jeff, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about cheap or underpricing and the effects that it can have on your business. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is I'm talking today about underpricing. So when I say cheap pricing, I mean underpricing. Uh, I believe this is different to low pricing and you can put low pricing into a category of its own. Low pricing can be quite a fair way of doing your business. Uh, so let's not confuse underpricing with low pricing. Underpricing is essentially just when you do not price enough for the service that you are going to provide and you don't make the necessary profit to sustain that service long term. And this can happen in any business when you find that you're just not earning enough income for the amount of hours that you are spending in your business. Now, as a business owner and not an employee, uh, you have to cover all the hours in your business, not just the hours where you're actually producing paid work for your clients. And that's one of the mistakes that many of us make when we're starting out in business we fail to account for all the hours in our business. We have to charge for those, we have to earn money for those, that's how business works. And included in that is time traveling. So your time traveling to your jobs and from your jobs back to your office or your home, wherever your place of business is, you need to charge for those hours. You also need to charge for the hours that you spend uh, uploading the client's work to the internet, uh, the time you spend even billing your client for that job, that's got to be included in your calculations because you've got to you've got to spend time at some point during your week invoicing as well as tracking your invoices, going through them and looking to see who's paid. And that's the kind of work you're going to have to do yourself as a, as a sole trader, as a small business owner. And you may think, well, I charge for my jobs, but I can't really charge someone to do that kind of work. Well, you don't actually charge them to do that kind of work in your business. You just make sure you charge enough for your jobs that covers all those miscellaneous little things in your business that you need to do to keep it going. Just think about it. If you're spending hours or time of your week uh, driving to and from jobs or billing or doing other things which aren't actually photography related or post-production related, who's paying you for those hours? Because you can't use those hours to actually go and shoot or process work. You've got to use those hours doing those other things. So those hours have to be covered in your billing and your pricing. A helpful way to think about that is to think about if you had an employee. If you employed someone in your business to take photos for you, you would have to pay them an hourly rate. And that covers them even when they're driving to and from the job. So they're getting paid to drive to the job they're getting paid to do the job, they're getting paid to drive back, they're getting paid to upload the photos. When they get back to your office and they're uploading photos and they're sitting around waiting for that, they're getting paid. Uh, they're getting paid obviously when they're doing post-production. Uh, they're also getting paid when they're doing all the other things in your business which aren't necessarily related uh, uh, directly to taking photos or producing photos. So think about it like that. You, you have an employee, if you did have an employee that is, you would have to pay them for all those incendiary, all those extra hours. So if you considered yourself an employee, if you think about your business as the employer and yourself as the employee, then you've got to cover yourself for those costs. You've got to think to yourself, well, if I'm an employee, I've got to pay myself for X amount of hours per week. And it doesn't matter what task I'm doing, I need to pay myself for those hours. So it's helpful to think of yourself in that way if you want to price correctly to begin with to be able to make the profit you need to cover those extra hours and tasks in your business. Cheap prices are a lot like sugar. They'll give you an initial rush in the beginning, but generally speaking, over the long term, they're gonna do more harm than good. Now, the initial rush in the beginning will be real estate agents who are more than willing to pay less for a service they're already getting, and many of them will. And you might find yourself picking up quite a few clients this way. But long term, you're just gonna to put too much pressure on your business with your finances being tight. Uh, getting less for spending the same amount of hours is not a great idea unless you're going to reduce the number of hours that you spend working. Uh, prices should always be equivalent to the amount of hours you're working. They should always go up and down 
with the amount of time spent on your service. They should never be just dropped without the service itself being dropped. Pricing should be determined by value adding. We add value. As photographers, we add value to whatever we photograph because we photograph it in the best light and we produce the best quality images possible. Real estate agents use that visual image to draw people into their listings. That's how they attract people in the beginning. We're the image creators. We're the ones who create that image for the real estate agent to use to get people interested in that listing. What we do is an integral part of their business. It's an integral part of what they do. They couldn't exist anymore on the internet as real estate agents without that visual image attracting buyers and attracting them into their listings. So what we do then is really an important part of their business. We add value to their business and our pricing should be determined by the value we add. Cheap pricing or underpricing is hard to escape from when you're working for real estate agents. Now, not every form of photography is gonna have this issue and that's because as real estate photographers, we are trying to get clients or agents that we can work for repeatedly over the long term. That's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to get three, four, five, six clients or more that we can get regular work from so that we don't have to continually sell our services to people. That's, I mean, not that we do that. It's just the nature of our photography. And it's a nature of dealing with another company who has a regular need of images. So for other types of photographers who have one-off clients, like wedding or portrait photographers, for example, uh, they can afford to test out their pricing. And if they find that their pricing isn't high enough, they can then adjust it for the next client and adjust it for the next client and so forth. They can do that as they go because they cycle through a lot more clients, sometimes hundreds and thousands. Whereas real estate photographers, we generally have four or five or six agents, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, and we stick with those for years. So once we lock in our prices with an agent, it is extremely difficult then to change those prices in an upward motion if we need to uh, without difficult negotiations, without souring our relationship with those agents. So it's really important if you're going to price for real estate photography or any kind of photography where you're gonna get ongoing work for someone, it's very important to do your costing carefully and to get your prices right in the beginning. Underpricing also makes your job harder. You know, when things go wrong and things will go wrong, you're already now under pressure to do more for the same amount of money. So if you find that you have to Photoshop things out of images, uh, if there's things you were supposed to take out of an image and you forgot on site and the agent says, hey, you're supposed to do that, can you remove that in Photoshop? Or if you find there was mistakes made and you need to reshoot, those things cut into your profit. So if your profit margin is tight in the beginning, it's just a given that it's gonna suffer when you make mistakes if you underprice. You need to take those things into account. Underpricing doesn't take into account uh, situations, mistakes, problems that cost you time in your business. Now, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But otherwise, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and watching my videos and following. Thank you for your questions and comments as well. When I started this channel, I started it because I just wanted to help people with their photography businesses, specifically real estate photography. I met a lot of people who were struggling in real estate photography, who were struggling with pricing and low pricing specifically. And I had a lot of conversations with a lot of different people and that kind of pushed me to start this channel to try and help people and try and educate and just to try and lift the industry overall. And that was always my first and primary goal for this channel. I didn't, I didn't really expect this channel to grow as much as it has over the last couple of years. And I feel very privileged that it has. And I am privileged for every single person who subscribes and watches my content. I've run my own business full time since 2007 and I photographed my first real estate property way back in 2005. So for me, it's been a long time. It's been 14 years now since my first real estate photography job. 
over the years, you know, I've worked for dozens of agents and I've done hundreds, if not thousands of jobs, and I've seen almost every property you can imagine. Uh, and over the years, I've experienced the ups and downs of this industry and this business in every way, shape and form. I'm currently putting together some educational content, which I'll be offering on my website. And if that's something that interests you, then you can go up to my website and sign up for email notifications of when that content will be available. Again, thank you to everyone who subscribed and watched my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.